Hello and welcome to this first in a series of videos about the basics of synthesizers. So in this video we're going to be looking at the oscillator or oscillators which are the foundational sound source, the kind of thing that creates the sound at the beginning of the synthesis journey etc. There's quite a few different ways to do this, different oscillators do different jobs etc. Uh, we're going to be taking a look at that over the next couple of videos. In this video we're going to be making use of Voltage Modular, which is a modular synthesizer software. So it's not going to be uh, running Cubase. This is going to be run natively in Voltage Modular. You can get this for free. I would strongly encourage you to do so. There's a link in the description. It's a really brilliant bit of software, and it's great. Even if you just use the free version, the modules that I'm going to use in this are only free ones. So you'll be able to follow along, experiment, and with so many of these things, there's no substitute for actually doing it yourself. So watching a video, watching me doing it, obviously you're going to learn something. Well, hopefully you're going to learn something. Uh, but doing it yourself and actually understanding it on your own terms and playing around with it is something that's really important to do. So you will learn much more by following along and then at the end of the video, just plugging stuff in randomly and seeing how it goes and learning from that. So I'd really strongly encourage you to do that at all stages. So. With no more ado, let's have a look in Voltage Modular. So here we are in Voltage and we're going to alternate between using Voltage and Cubase. So Voltage is useful because it means we can just isolate individual parts of the synth and today that's oscillators. So we can look at just particular oscillators in isolation without the other parts of the synth confusing matters. Then we can look at them in, in the wild, as it were, in use in actual synthesizers, which you might be using in everyday uh, music generation. So first things first, let's just look at this oscillator. So we're going to find the oscillator here. Generally, what I do is type part of the name to allow me to narrow it down. And although there are more modules here than you may see, if you've got the free version of Voltage, you will have this. I have checked. We click Add. It appears there. I'm going to turn the library off so we just see these controls. And now we need to connect it up. So word of warning, first things first, turn your main outs down. The reason is, well, the reason will become apparent in a few seconds. So we're just going to connect this up from here to the outputs. And it's running all the time, okay? So first lesson, other than turn it down, is the oscillators, in many cases, will be running all the time. So it's just generating audio. The only reason we don't hear it most of the time is because of other parts of the synth stopping us from hearing it, but they may well be running all of the time generating whatever pitch they're generating. So we need to add some other bits just to allow us to not go crazy at this point. So I'm going to click library and I'm going to add in an amplifier. And again, this is something that's included. It's a really useful part of the, the boring bits of a synth. I'm going to put it over here so it's clear that this isn't what we are that concerned with. I'm going to plumb it in by just taking the output here to the input of the amplifier, positive output here to there, and we can see now nothing's happening. So we're kind of at a different end of the scale where we're not hearing anything. The last thing we need to do is to turn this amplifier on when we press a key, and that's done in this case by taking the gate. So the gate signal just says whether a key's been pressed or not. I'm going to put it on there, and now... When I press a key and release it, it turns on and then off. So we can see the MIDI light going here and when I press it, when I release. So we've got some control now. It's not just wittering on endlessly. Um, but we still now have no pitch. If I play any of the notes on my keyboard, we have no control of pitch and that's because we need to send it to it. So this is one of the parts of modular synthesis which you, you have to get used to is that you have to make every connection and a lot of that stuff is just already done in the background in most synthesizers you come across but it's easily done here so we're going to take pitch to pitch cv and now we're in business okay so now we can take a look at the oscillator itself so each oscillator type has different features we're going to look at a few in here and then we're going to go and look at some in cubase so in this particular oscillator, we have different waveforms on different outputs. So we've heard the square wave already, but let's take a look at it. So I'm just going to turn the library on and 
put an oscilloscope in. Again, that's included in the free version. Just going to plug it into the output. Click there and then drag that to input A. Put auto trigger on plus and then when we play that, there we go, let's zoom in. There's our square wave. Great. We've got different waveforms. So we've got a sawtooth, which goes upwards. So that ramps upwards. We've got a sawtooth, which ramps downwards. Doesn't sound any different to us, but can be useful to have that. We've heard the square wave already. We've got sine wave, which sounds much purer for reasons that will become apparent later, and triangle wave. So we've got a reasonable selection of those kind of geometric basic waveforms, the simple things. So there are reasons why these are included. They are generally the easiest things for real, in quotes, electronic circuits to generate. Uh, and it's not uncommon to see these plus some others. And we're going to look at some others as well before we move into real oscillators in Cubase. There's a few other controls we want to look at. Range. So typically this will be pitch or octave, something like that. So these are measured in feet. So you can see we've got 32 feet going all the way up to two. And if I play the same note on the keyboard, we can hear that changes by an octave each time. And this is really derived from the world of organs where pipes were measured in feet. And you'd have different harmonies depending on the way that the pipes were, were stopped and so on. But this refers to you would have a 32 foot pipe in some context, which would generate that particular tone. So you'll typically see that or octave switching as we may see later on. We've also got low on this, which is below the audio range. And that makes this particular oscillator really useful for modulation and so on. And that's not something we're going to be looking at today. So we're just looking at oscillators, but being able to control part of an oscillator with another oscillator is essential for making sounds which are interesting and develop over time, etc. Because while you have the novelty of having made a synth sound, possibly with a square wave, etc., it's probably not something you're going to spend that much time being enamored with. The last control I want to look at at the moment is the pulse width control. So this is only applicable for the square wave, in quotes, and this allows us to control the plus to minus ratio. Handily, this particular oscillator has a nice little display showing us what's happening. So if we play a note and turn this to the left, you'll see that the pulse width decreases and we spend more time down than up. I'm just going to zoom out a bit more. And there we go. So we can see that that's changing. And if we go the other way, we end up with more up than down, all the way to supposedly 100%, although it's not quite 100% because if it was, we wouldn't be hearing a pitch. But it's certainly not far off that. And this generates a different waveform as we've seen and different harmonics and we will see that in action this is a fairly common thing and often this gets modulated so you hear these sounds and it sounds it's kind of changing pitch but kind of not it's an interesting effect so one last control on here is the frequency control so this fine tunes the pitch now these come in different forms sometimes you see switches which allow you to pick semitones and then fine tuning that allows you to tune within those this has just got plus or minus seven semitones with no detents it's just continuous so let's play here and we can hear we can go down to minus seven or we can go up to plus seven and we can detune it as much as we want and if you're not sure on voltage you can double click and then type a value in. So if you find it difficult to get it back to zero or a precise value you want, you can just do that. So that's your basic general purpose synth oscillator, but there are others available. Not all may be available on the free version of Voltage, but we're going to take a look at them anyway. So the first one is a drum oscillator. Now you may be wondering what a drum oscillator is, and it's it's much the same as a normal oscillator. It's just that it has fewer controls, as we can see here. So we've still got the option of sine, triangle, and square wave output. And it's still playing, but I'm just going to completely remove this one so you can see what's going on and close the library. So here we've just got this drum oscillator. Now it's only going to be heard when I press a key down, but you can see the pitch isn't being controlled by it at all. The pitch is only controlled by this. 
and the modulation control. So if we were going to have, you can see if I do that, it sounds a bit like, if I get the timing right, and that's what this is for. So in the modulation video, we're going to take a look at this kind of thing, how you can use this to change pitch. But the drum oscillator effectively is a much simpler oscillator. Let's take a look at another one. So here's the noise generator. And again, it's similar to the drum oscillator in that there's fewer controls, but we have even fewer this time. And there's a good reason for that. So I'm going to just disconnect that. Delete the drum oscillator so you know it's not doing anything. And now we have just these two types of noise and level. We don't have any control over pitch. And as you may or may not know, white noise, pink noise, etc., they don't have a pitch because they've got frequencies everywhere. Uniform distribution they should have or a, a controlled distribution. So they shouldn't have a given pitch. And as you can see, that actually doesn't. And pink noise is a variation on that, a filtered version of it, if you like, but it certainly doesn't have a particular pitch. But again, that's useful in generating percussive sounds, drum sounds, etc. So they definitely have their uses, as you will see later on in the series. Now, one thing you, you probably won't have will be the vintage and VCO20 oscillator. So let's have a look at the vintage oscillator. Now, those of you who've seen a few synths in your time, will probably recognize one of these. So this is certainly in terms of appearance, very similar to a Moog uh, control panel. And we can see something. We are plugged into the square wave. It says it's generating a square wave, but we've just found something out here, which is that does not look like the square wave that we saw earlier on, which pretty much did look like a square. This is a totally different waveform. So this is an important lesson about oscillators in sense that they generally may not produce the waveform that they say they're producing, and that is why they sound the way they do. So this square wave sounds different to the square wave of the basic voltage oscillator precisely because it's not actually creating a square wave. As you can see, it's got some similar controls, although it gives us the option of 64 feet. As well as low. You can hear that clicking away. Here, frequency, very similar. We've got plus or minus seven semitones and the pulse width control. And we've got some modulation controls, which again, we will get to later on in the series but that's that variation and then let's take a look at a last one from here in voltage so here is the vco 20 dual oscillator i'm going to just put that into there and put this into here and delete that so there we can hear just this and here we have some slightly different controls because we've actually got two oscillators in one and we have them mixed together, but they've got scale, we've got pitch on one and pulse width on another one, and we've got some different waveform choices. So let's just listen just to this one oscillator by plugging into VCO1. We can hear and see. So there's our triangle wave but you can see that the triangle wave is like a sharpened sine wave it's not quite a triangle we've got a sawtooth which has got quite a pronounced curve on it again not the geometric shape we were expecting we've got our square wave which again is not a square wave but it's different to the one we've just seen and we've got a pulse width control as you can hear but it works in a different way it's extending that flat part rather than the sort of tapered down part so it works in a quite a different way and then we've got our scale control as before now if we go to vco2 we can see we've got those same things but we've also got a ring modulator so that is these two are being modulated together and that's something we'll look at later on i've just realized i forgot the noise so let's go back to vco1 and we get noise which could be useful 
So here we've got the ability to fine tune pitch and you notice here, although it's marked as plus or minus five, we've got just over an octave and then we've got our scale here. So we can pick pretty much any pitch between this and then we've got the mix here so we can control. We've got a mix of the two. And that's got its own uses as well. So that's a look at some of the features of oscillators, in this case in voltage modular, but this isn't to just send you off into the wilderness in another platform that you're not used to yet. This is just so you can see that you are only dealing with these things alone and not all the other things that happen because one of the issues with modern synths is what happens with, I think, any sufficiently advanced technology is that it becomes much more complicated to understand. So in the same way, coding has become much more complicated in some ways than it used to be. When I was a kid, you get a computer, it was fairly simple, you'd program in basic, etc., that's that's not the way things work now. Um, programming the web, you know, it used to be just a bit of HTML and you were away, and obviously that doesn't cut it with almost anybody now. Um, and the same with this. Most synths that you get now will have a whole load of features that you may not understand. And if this is the beginning of your synthesis uh, journey, it's, it's difficult to understand if you're tweaking this control as part of an oscillator or whatever and often you know all the best sounds will have a lot of things happening on them and it's it can be difficult to break away from that so that's why we've looked at that in in isolation in this particular video in the next video uh, we're going to be looking at these in cubase so looking at the way oscillators work in different synths in cubase some of these synths you'll have some of these synths you won't have but you'll kind of get an idea so in the same way, if you wanted to learn a mixing desk, you might learn a simple one and then you'd go into a big studio and you'd see, you know, a 72 channel desk. But if you know some of the controls, you can start manipulating already, even if you don't know what all the controls do. So this is definitely that kind of process. So in the next video, we're going to look at some of these synths in Cubase, etc., and apply the things we've looked at and see how they appear in different synths because... The controls can look different, even though they're doing exactly the same thing. As ever, I hope you found this video useful, and if you have, please like and subscribe, and we'll see you again soon for more Music Tech Tuition. <laughs>